What's up, everybody? I'm Nick from Sneak Peek, and we're here at South by Southwest for the premiere of Evil Dead Rise. We're going to be interviewing the cast and crew, so let's get right into it. No matter how busy you ever got, you always found time for me. I can't believe I'm never going to speak to you again. How does it feel to be at South by? It's amazing. It's my third time here. And it just feels so good to be able to show this film here. I think uh, just feeling the excitement from everybody is, yeah, it's brilliant. It's amazing to be at South by Southwest to, to bring this movie to the world. I've always wanted to visit Austin. I've always wanted to come to this festival. So to be able to come with a movie that's as uh, insane as, as it is and, and bring it into the Austin crowd and bring it into the Paramount Theater, it's a dream come true. It's fantastic to be here. We're around the same age that you and Sam were that's right. whenever you we made the first out, yeah. Evil Dead. What was it like back then to create something it seemed normal. being so young? It's only now that you look back and you realize how absurd it was. But having never made a movie before, we didn't know how difficult it was or how difficult it should be. We started out with a schedule of six weeks. We filmed for 12 weeks because we didn't know how long it would actually take to shoot some of these shots. So it was a big, a huge learning curve, the first one. What horrors can audiences expect from your work on this movie? We really try to build on the foundation of the old films, like we got hold of actually all the sound effects from the first two movies. So we had all those available, but then trying to build that to and build that with modern sound so that we have the history of the Evil Dead legacy, but we also want to make this a modern movie and turn it into I mean, it's really a roller coaster. Like, this is such a crazy film, and I think people will be really, like, whoa, uh, overwhelmed by this. And that also comes very much from the sound, because we did so many crazy things with sound in this film. How did you feel about now entering a new a franchise, a, a, leg a legendary franchise like Evil Dead? Yeah, I was excited. There's very few franchises I would be interested in telling a story in. Um, and I think part of what was great about this was it was actually an, you know, an ambition of mine. I always wanted to try and tell an, an Evil Dead story or make an Evil Dead movie. Um, but once I found, I said, the right kind of story, it felt just like the perfect fit for everybody. The producers wanted something new, someone with a new vision, someone with a new voice. And I wanted to do something that, uh, that I loved. Uh, so it was just, it was kind of like the perfect coming together and meeting of minds. So we know that this isn't your only night here at South by. You just premiered another film, a one actress film called yeah. Monolith, just the other night. How would you compare the preparation for a role like that in an independent film compared to the role of Beth here as um, yeah, cool in a franchise? Cool, yeah, like, exactly. Totally. I mean, like, we made the film for $500,000, we made it in three weeks. It was, for me, a palate cleanser to Evil Dead. Evil Dead is full physical, full primal, whereas this was full intellectual, inwards, no other actors to act across, no stimulation, it was purely just mind, which was such an awesome juxtaposition. But to prepare for both of the roles, it's all about, I think, unfiltering yourself, canceling that judgment mind, and just also flow it, free-falling, basically, which is how I compare the two films for myself. Is there something about horror that just draws you, to compels you to be a part of it? Uh, well, you know, on Vikings, I kind of sat in thrones and ordered people about, <laughs> you know? I wasn't really a part of the gore on Vikings. Um, I got really lucky because all the rest of the cast would like come back from days of filming battle scenes and I, I'm like, I sat in a throne and like hung out with a couple kids and, and that was my day. Uh, this was an entirely different experience for me. It was so much fun. I love doing stunts. That was a new challenge for me, like having to do that very technical choreography and fuse that with a performance is, it was a challenge for me, but um, really fun. Was there a horror experience in your life that just made you go, I, I have to be a part of this. I have to do something for this. If there was a horror experience? Yes. I'm, I'm not sure about that actually. I feel that when the great thing about horror movies is that you experience something in the movies that you don't need to experience in real life. I think there's a number of things. I think like Jaws was a movie that scared me first. It was the first thing I ever saw. I saw Evil Dead 2 and actually Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 when I was like eight or nine years old. And the energy of those movies was like something that was super, super impressive and, 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 and exciting to me. 
and then like some obviously there's always those weird ones like I love the Wicker Man you know I love I love paranoid horror as well and one of the things I love about Evil Dead that's often overlooked is the fact that there's a lot of psychological warfare between the deadites and the people that are not possessed yet and that's something that I was really attracted to something that I really loved I remember talking to Sam about it and him also loving that that idea of the taunting and the gameplay because the deadites are powerful they could wipe you out right away but they actually want to play games they want to torture and they want to destroy innocence and that was really interesting to me <laughs> I'd say quite the opposite. I, um, my sister, when she was like 13, she had a slumber party and they watched the original It. Um, and me and my brother, who are younger than my sister, we also watched It along with her and we're far too young to have watched that film. And I think the two of us were traumatized for a very long time. A candy man. I can't wash my face. I can't wash my face at night time. Every time I come up from rinsing my face, I'm scared and I think there's going to be someone behind me in the mirror. Do you have any advice uh, for future filmmakers who want yes, to make something? Yes, Never copy anybody. Don't copy Quentin Tarantino, Sam Raimi, Lee Cronin. Don't copy any of these guys. Tell your story. Look at two movies. I say, tell people, look at two movies back to back without the sound. Evil Dead 2 and A Simple Plan, directed by the same guy and you'd never know it. Because stylistically, Evil Dead 2 is crazy. Camera up the nose kind of deal. A Simple Plan is this, followed by this, followed by this. It's a simple, it's a simple plan. It's a simple movie. And it gets more complicated as it goes. So as a filmmaker, if you didn't write the script, Respect the material. It's all about the material. It's not about your f cool shots. You know? Like Sam Raimi directed Gene Hackman in Quick and the Dead. They had to hide the storyboards. Because Gene Hackman, he's a real actor. He comes out, what the f is this? What is this, a cartoon? Which cartoon character am I? And it f him off. He didn't want to be a little chess piece in your little movie. You know, so talk to actors, learn what it takes to actors. Rehearse. I think like trying to do a lot of different um, sound, like just uh, listen to your favorite films and find out, okay, so what is it I like about these films? What is it I love? I did that with the old Evil Dead movies, um, like listening like and thinking, okay, so these are the things I really love. And then record a lot of sound and make a lot of movies and it could be very short films just like you, you just need to be creative and play around and I think that's the key for all of this it's really to be uh, be very creative and for me like making this movie it was like being on a playground it's like it's this amazing feeling that we can play around with things all the time I, 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 th I think making something simple is a really good thing Starting simple, something that you can control and make to a really, really high level. My first horror short through the night is about two people in a room. It's 10 minutes long. And I tried to just make the scariest scene that I could. So start small in terms of what you're doing, but with big ambition. That's the key. My partner is in a band. I have other actor friends. And our biggest thing that I found over my 12 years of doing this, and it has been 12 years, and for this moment now, it's like I feel like acting or filmmaking, whatever position, is a 12-year to 10-year apprenticeship. And also just outlive and outlast. You have to stay standing because people will drop off. And if you stand there, you learn so much more about yourself. I think um, you have to keep working hard. You've got to stay curious and humble and tenacious. Um, and you've got to love what you do. If you don't love it, it you know, it's, it's not an easy business to be in. There are really hard times. There are good times. It's high highs and low lows. Um, and I think if you go in expecting that and knowing that that's what it is, um, but it's just there's a fire inside of you that can't be squelched, um, then go for it. Mom? Mommy's with the maggots now.